The GI scale or glycemic index scale is a scale that is reported in many nutrition journals which purports to give us an idea of how quickly a given carbohydrate will for want of a better term, dump glucose into our bloodstream. The faster a food dumps glucose into the bloodstream, the more damaging it is to our metabolic health, so we're told. Problem though, the GI scale is an average number. It's an average result taken from actually a very small number of people, not a very large number of people at all. And the difference between individual people was very, 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 very variable. It varied widely is, is a better terminology for that. Um, why is that a problem in terms of making assessments about things? Well, I'll give you an example. If I was to say I want to be able to say how tall is an adult man and I had a population of adult men who I was making the assessment on and I measured 100 men and they were all six feet tall plus or minus an inch or so, then I could say the average height of, a, of an adult man is six feet, and the assessment I've made is accurate to within a couple of inches either way for 99% of adult men, if that's what I measured. However, to use the analogy of the height of men from the GI scale example, what we actually would get is a fifth of the men around three feet tall, a fifth around four feet tall, or a fifth around five feet tall, a fifth around six feet tall, and a fifth around seven feet tall. The average is still the same. It's still six feet tall. It's a skewed distribution, shall we say. But nonetheless, the, the accuracy now of the assessment of the height of adult men is six feet plus or minus the three feet. It's quite different, isn't it? That's what you've got with the GI scale. It's no good. I respond very differently to a bolus of white bread than you do. I respond very differently to a bolus of whole grain bread than you do. I respond differently to pasta than you do, etc., etc. I respond differently to fruit than you do. We're individual a little bit in terms of that. I say a little bit, it's actually a lot. Statistically, that's the problem. All right. So that's the first problem with the GI scale. A small number of people tested who, are, who were widely variable, so much that the what we call signal-to-noise ratio on the GI scale is nonsensical. It means the whole measurement is of no value. You can't pick up and look at a table of GI values and go, oh, look, a piece of white bread has a GI of 110. No, because your response to that white bread might be somewhere between 110 and 50. Hopeless. All right. Here's the next problem. Even if we adjust the GI value to you individually by doing measurements on you repeatedly, we still get widely variable results from day to day from time to time, from the exact same food challenge given to you, the same person. It doesn't even work test retest on an individual, let alone between individuals. The GI scale is not a tool that can be used to assess the likely damage that will be done to your body by carbohydrates at all. All carbohydrates break down to the same thing. That is sugar. Sugar is contraindicated in the human diet. The exact requirement for carbohydrates in the human diet is not one gram ever. Ergo, the best thing to do is to avoid all carbohydrates. Don't change your diet overnight from a diet rich in carbohydrates to a diet which has no carbohydrates in it. That's a bad idea. That'll upset your microbiome and they'll let you know about it uh, by giving you at least a week of loose bowel action, possibly pain and suffering and bloating and inflammation in your enteric system while there's a war that goes on between the bacteria that are now being starved out and those that are now starting to take hold, etc. cetera, the, the ones that, uh, that don't like the carbohydrates so much and, and uh, more appreciate the meat and the fat, that kind of, th that, that, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so don't do that. Change your diet slowly, progressively, and sensibly. Talk to Jess about how to do that. Uh, or if you're not one of Jess's people, talk to me about how to do that. My email address is on the About tab on my YouTube channel if you want to talk to me about that. And I shall be happy to consult with you. In the meantime, there you go. Inside five minutes, what's wrong with the GI scale? It's nonsense. It doesn't work. It's, it's a signal-to-noise ratio issue. At the, the number that you'll see on a page probably doesn't relate to anything rea in reality. It's of no value. All right. 
Thanks very much. See you next time.